Hello, this is Ryan from Amnesty, and I'm going to show you Theodora, or the Byzantium. Uh, you'll be able to... I'll tell you the victory conditions I'd recommend if you were to play as her. I'll also tell you the social policies I'd recommend, and also tell you about their two unique units. So, she has the Patriarchate of Constantinople, which means you choose one or more belief than normal when you found a religion. Now, it sounds very useless at first, which in some regards it is, but if you are a person that uh, does religion and does very well with it and is able to utilize it to the best of your ability, it is a huge, huge bonus. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have anything to help you with religion right off the bat as Byzantium, which is really not very good because sometimes you may miss out on uh, the religion beliefs that you want right off the bat. But not to worry, usually you're able to get a religion and a pantheon going just as fast as anybody else. But anyway, so the four victory conditions I'd recommend. Number one would definitely be domination. You definitely want to incorporate, incorporate your religion and your military together. So if you want to get the uh, faith, faith, uh, god of faith or something like that, you'll be able to kill the units and get faith out of it which is very, very nice, um, because you'll be able to climb up the faith ladder to get to the next tier of a religion or to spread it further a lot quicker. Um, you also want it to have the production types of faith bonuses as well. The reason being for that is because you'll be able to build units faster, be able to build buildings faster. Everything will be nice in terms of that. Um, and then also... Later on in the game, you'll want to spread all your religions well, as fast as you can, really. And at that point, gain allies, because they'll be following your religion as well. And with those allies, all of you can band up and attack other civilizations that aren't your religion. So you just dominate through that. And it's kind of a process of elimination. You go for the targets that aren't, are the least liked, and you need to be the leader that has to be liked the most based upon your religion. So it's a little bit of a tough victory condition, but it is definitely possible. Then the second thing I'd recommend is a cultural victory. Now you'll want to stay small. Obviously you're going to, with any victory condition, you're going to need to incorporate religion with it. At least uh, that's what I would recommend for you to do. So you'll stay small, you'll grab a religion, you'll grab a culture gaining belief system as well. If you're in the desert, you'll have the extra culture based on desert tiles or tundra, wherever you may be placed, uh, definitely find what adapts with your religion. You need to play it by that, which again makes this civilization extremely difficult to play in some regards because you have to go based upon a religion and that sometimes it's situational, but again, if you're able to get all things together all at once, you can highly dominate with Byzantium and you will be unstoppable. Uh, so it is a little bit tricky. Also, for cultural victory, you probably want to go down the piety track. I'll talk about social policies a little bit later here as well. And then now third, I would recommend is science. You want to grow large. You'll want to go with liberty. You'll want to build many cities throughout your empire. Uh, and at that point, grab a religion again. And instead of grabbing a culture gaining thing or a production gaining thing, you'll want to do science gaining. I know there's one uh, messenger of the gods, I believe it is, where each road or anything that's connected between your cities, you get plus two extra science, which is pretty huge. And then uh, there's also other abilities in there that will help your science additionally. I would highly recommend getting those as well. And then lastly, which I somewhat recommend, is a diplo diplomatic victory. Again, in, this, in that regard, you're going to want to just spread your religion throughout not really go to war, only times when you really need to or feel like you have to. Hope that everybody takes your religion. Hopefully there's not many civilizations around you that are spawning their own religion because otherwise it will be a very big challenge because you'll have to go even farther to get somebody to become your religion and then have them as an ally to go after another civilization that has something different, which can be quite tricky. And usually at those points you kind of want to abandon that option. But anyway, it is somewhat recommended. It's not too difficult. And now I will show you the Cataphract and the Dromon.
The cataphract will cost you 75 production or 150 face. It is a mounted unit. It's got a combat strength of 15, a movement of 3. His abilities is he can move after attacking and a penalty attacking cities. So unfortunately these guys are not the best to attack a city with, but they are nice to have when you are attacking some other units, specifically ones that are wandering around. That way you are able to kill it. Um, and then it does attack cities more well, more better than a horseman would. I know it doesn't sound like much because you still have the penalty attacking a city, so they do have a bit of an advantage over the early mounted unit, which it replaces, so I definitely would build a bunch of these, especially knock out the little units that you need to kill. And then the other special unit that they have is the drum mode, which costs you 56 production, which isn't that bad. There's a naval ranged unit, it's got a combat strength of 8, a range combat of 10, a range of 2, and a movement of 4. And then you cannot enter deep ocean, that's just without being said, too early on. You may not melee attack, it is a ranged naval thing, so I don't know why you would think it would melee attack. And it does have a bonus versus naval units, which is huge, because you're able to stay afar, blow them up. It's a huge, huge ship in the beginning. Especially you get in civilizations that don't have a unique ship because you just blow them out of the water. So, that does it for the uh, two units that they have. And now I will show you the social policies I'd recommend. Before I show you any social policies, I'll tell you about Byzantium start bias. Now, this is a fairly good indication of what you'll expect. You're going to be in plains, generally always. You'll also be near desert tiles, generally. Don't really have any of those, but sometimes you will find yourself there. Generally, you will be near the coast. Um, you will be near crabs, pearls, because you're near the coast. Somewhat of a hilly terrain as well. So it is a good indication of what you expect to see. And now I will show you the social policy I'd recommend. It would be liberty if you're going for a domination or scientific type of win. Because, as always, you'll get a worker. They'll work faster. You'll get a settler. They'll, you'll be able to create settlers quicker. And at the end of it all, you'll be able to have a free great person of your choice. I would recommend at that point you choose um, a great prophet. Because then you can start a religion if you haven't. You can do other things, spread it, whatever you need to do. Um, and then the other route to, to go would be piety. Piety is more or less recommended for the cultural or diplomatic version that you would go for. So, you'll get extra faith from shrines and temples, you'll get extra culture increased in cities that have a world wonder, you'll get a golden age, adopting all the policies will get you extra faith, gold, and culture from holy sites, which chances are you're going to build quite a few of them because you won't need the great prophets when they start to spawn a lot around the end of the game. So that helps out a ton by the end of the game. Um, so those are the two social policies I'd recommend. Now as always, you can choose other ones. Um, some are better than others, but those are the two that I recommend. So, thank you for watching. Please rate, subscribe, and comment, and check out my other videos.